Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will understand the two terms related to the electrical network. That is the driving point impedance and the transfer function. And we will see that if we have been given any electrical network, then how to find its driving point impedance and the transfer function. So before understanding this driving point impedance, first of all, let us understand what is the driving point. So for any electrical network, the driving point is the two terminals of the circuit across which we are connecting the energy source. And this energy source, like a voltage or the current source, then drives the entire network. So these two terminals of the network, where we are connecting the voltage or the current source, are known as the driving point of the network. Now in a one port network, since there is only one port, so this standalone port will act as a driving point. Because this energy source can only be connected to that particular port. But in a multi-port network, depending on where the power supply is connected, the specific port will act as a driving point. For example, if the power supply is connected to the port 1, then that port will act as a driving point. Similarly, if it is connected to the second port, then in that case, this port 2 will act as a driving point. So now, the impedance which is seen through this driving point is known as the driving point impedance of the network. So basically, it is the input impedance of the network which is seen through the voltage source. So for a one port network, if this V of S is the voltage at the port and this I of S is the incoming current to the port, then the driving point impedance of the network is equal to V of S divided by the I of S. So here, both V of S and the I of S are the voltage and the current in the S domain. So here, we are assuming that our network consists of resistor, capacitor and the inductor. And that's why these voltages and the current are represented in the S domain. But if it is purely resistive network, then there is no need to use this S domain representation. So here, since both V of S and the I of S are in the S domain, so this driving point impedance will also be in the S domain. Now for a two-port network, if the voltage source is connected to the port 1, then we will get the driving point impedance corresponding to that port. That means if V1S and the I1S are the S domain voltage and the current at the port 1, then the driving point impedance which is seen through the port 1 is equal to V1S divided by the I1S. So basically, it is the input impedance of the network which is seen through the port 1. So similar to the impedance, if we want to find the driving point admittance, then it will be the inverse of the impedance. And as you know, the admittance is represented by the symbol Y. That means the driving point admittance at the port 1, that is Y11 can be given as this I1 divided by V1. So that is the expression of the driving point impedance and the admittance when the input is applied at the port 1. But suppose, if the input is applied at the port 2, then the driving point impedance at the port 2 can be given as is V2 of S divided by the I2 of S. And here, this V2 and I2 are the voltage and current at the port 2. And similarly, if we see the driving point admittance at the port 2, then this Y2 2 will be the inverse of the impedance. That means this Y2 2 is equal to I2 divided by V2. So in this way, if we know the voltage and current at the specific port, then we can easily find the driving point impedance or the admittance of the network. So basically, this driving point impedance of the network is the input impedance of the network which is seen through the specific port. And even if we do not know the port parameters like the voltage and current at the specific port, then also it is possible to find the driving point impedance. And of course, for that, we should be aware about the internal circuit of the network. So through a couple of examples, let us see how to find the driving point impedance of the network. So in this example, we have been asked to find the driving point impedance of the given circuit. So here, we do not know the port parameters like the input voltage and the input current. But we know that the driving point impedance is nothing but the input impedance of the circuit. And here if you see, then it is the Thevenin's equivalent impedance which is seen across these two terminals. So here, to find that, first of all let us find the equivalent S domain representation for the given circuit. So for the capacitor, we know that the equivalent S domain representation is equal to 1 divided by Cs. And of course, here we are assuming that all the initial conditions of the circuit are 0. 
that means the s domain representation for the capacitor is equal to 1 divided by cs and here the value of c is equal to 0.5 faraday so we can say that this 1 divided by cs is equal to 2 divided by s similarly for the inductor the equivalent s domain representation is equal to ls and here the value of l is equal to 2 henry that means if we see the equivalent s domain representation then that is equal to 2s and for the resistor the equivalent representation will remain the same that is equal to 2 ohm that means now if we see the equivalent s domain circuit then it will look like this so for the given circuit now let us find the equivalent impedance which is seen across these two terminals so here this 2 ohm and the 2s are connected in the series connection and that combination is connected in parallel with the capacitor so we can say that the z of s is equal to 2 plus 2s that is this combination in parallel with this capacitor that is equal to 2 divided by s so we can say that that is equal to 2 plus 2s times 2 divided by s divided by this 2 plus 2s plus 2 divided by s that means this z of s is equal to 4 times this s plus 1 divided by this 2 times this s plus s square plus 1 or we can say that that is equal to 2 times s plus 1 divided by s square plus s plus 1 so that is the driving point impedance of the circuit in the s domain so in this way we can easily find the driving point impedance so similarly let us take the another example so here we have been given the driving point impedance of the network and we have been asked to find the component values of the given network so in this question we have been given this parallel rlc circuit and for this parallel rlc circuit we have been given the driving point impedance so here since the driving point impedance is given in the s domain so first of all let us find the equivalent s domain representation for the given circuit so we know that for the capacitor the equivalent s domain representation is equal to 1 divided by cs and similarly for the inductor that is equal to ls and for the resistor it will remain as it is that means for the given circuit this is the equivalent s domain circuit now if you see over here then all the elements in the network are connected in the parallel connection and therefore it is easier to find the admittance of the network compared to the impedance so for the given circuit if you see the driving point admittance that is y of s then that can be given as cs plus 1 divided by r plus 1 divided by ls so basically it is the admittance of the each term and since these components are connected in the parallel connection so the overall admittance of the network will be the summation of the individual admittance and here from the given expression of the driving point impedance we can say that the driving point admittance of the network or this y of s is equal to 1 divided by z of s so here that is equal to s square plus 0.1 s plus 2 divided by 0.2 s so we can say that that is equal to this s divided by 0.2 plus 0.1 divided by 0.2 plus 2 divided by 0.2s so this will be the expression of the y of s from the given expression so now if we compare this expression with this expression then we can say that over here this c is equal to 1 by 0.2 that is equal to 5 faraday similarly if you see this 1 divided by r then that is equal to 0.1 divided by 0.2 that is equal to 1 by 2 so we can say that the value of r is equal to 2 ohm and likewise if we see this 1 divided by l then that is equal to 2 divided by 0.2 that means the value of l is equal to 0.1 henry so in this way for the given circuit the value of c is equal to 5 faraday while the value of r is equal to 2 ohm and likewise the value of l is equal to 0.1 henry so in this way from the expression of the driving point impedance we found the values of the component for the given circuit so similar to the driving point impedance now let us understand what is the transfer function of the electrical network 
Now, if you see the expression of the driving point impedance or the admittance, then it relates the voltage and current of the same port. That means in the driving point impedance, both voltage and current are of the input side. But if you see the transfer function, then it relates either voltage or current of the one port to the voltage or current of the another port. So basically, this transfer function relates either voltage or current of the output port with the voltage or current of the input port. That means to define the transfer function, we require at least two ports. And therefore, it cannot be defined for the one port network. So for the two port network, let's say this V1S and the I1S are the voltage and current at the port 1. Similarly, let's say the voltage and current at the port 2 are V2 of S and the I2 of S. So as you can see over here, all the voltage and currents are defined in the S domain. Now here, for each input and output port, we have total two variables, that is voltage and the current. And for the two variables, we can have total four different types of transfer functions between the input and the output port. So one of them is the voltage transfer function. So this voltage transfer function is the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage. So in this case, we have assumed that the input is applied at the port 1 and the output is measured at the second port. That means in this case, this V1 of S is the voltage on the input side while the V2 of S is the voltage on the output side. That means in this case, this voltage transfer function is equal to V2 of S divided by the V1 of S. But suppose, if the input is applied at the port 2 and the output is measured at the port 1, then in that case, this voltage transfer function will become V1 of S divided by the V2 of S. And here, it is represented as the S21. So here, this first subscript represents the input port and the second subscript represents the output port. So as you can see over here, the second port is our input port while the first port is our output port. That means in general, if you are taking the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage, then it is defined as the voltage transfer function. Now instead of the voltage, if you are taking the ratio of the output and the input current, then it is defined as the current transfer function. So if we assume that if the port 1 is the input port and the port 2 is the output port, then the current transfer ratio alpha 1 2 is equal to I2 divided by I1. So like I said earlier, this first subscript represents the input port while the second subscript represents the output port. That means here, this alpha 1 2 is the ratio of the output current I2 divided by the input current I1. But on the other end, if the port 2 is our input port and the port 1 is our output port, then in that case, this current transfer ratio or this alpha 2 1 is equal to I1 divided by I2. So basically, depending on where we are applying the input in the network and on which port we are measuring the output, the expression of the current transfer ratio will change. But in general, this current transfer ratio for the given network is the ratio of the output current to the input current. So similarly, if you take the ratio of the output voltage to the input current, then it is known as the transfer impedance. Because if you see the unit of this ratio, then it is same as the unit of the impedance. So if the input is applied at the port 1 and the output is measured at the port 2, then this transfer impedance Z12 can be given as is V2 divided by I1, where the V2 is the voltage on the output side, while this I1 is the current on the input side. But on the other end, if we apply the input at the port 2, and if we measure the output on the port 1, then this transfer impedance can be given as this V1 of S divided by the I2 of S. Because now, this V1 of S is the output voltage, while this I2 of S is the input current. And now, it can be represented as the Z21. So in short, this transfer impedance is the ratio of the output voltage to the input current. So similarly, if we take the ratio of the output current to the input voltage, then it is known as the transfer admittance. So for the two-port network, if the input is applied at the port 1 and the output is measured at the port 2, then this transfer impedance Y12 can be given as this I2 divided by V1. That means here, this I2 is the output current, while this V1 is the input voltage. And the other way around, if the input is applied at the port 2 and the output is measured on the port 1, 
that this transferred impedance y2 one can be given as this i1 divided by v2 that means in general for any given electrical network the transfer admittance is the ratio of the output current to the input voltage so in this way we have total four different types of transfer functions between the input and the output port so now let us take few examples based on the transfer function and let us find out how to find the transfer function for the given network so in this question we have been asked to find the transfer function that is v out divided by v i for the given circuit so as you can see this v of s is the output voltage across this one ohm resistor so to find that first of all let us find the equivalent s domain representation for the given circuit so here we are assuming that the initial conditions in the circuit are zero and with that assumption for the capacitor the equivalent s domain representation is equal to 1 divided by cs so here since c is equal to 1 faraday so we can say that for these two capacitors the equivalent s domain representation is equal to 1 divided by s similarly for the inductor the equivalent s domain representation is equal to ls and here since l is equal to 1 henry so we can say that that is equal to s that means for these two capacitors the equivalent s domain representation is equal to 1 divided by s while for this inductor that is equal to s and we know that for the resistors the equivalent representation will remain the as it is so overall if we see the equivalent s domain representation for the given circuit then this is how it will look like so now if you see then we have total two nodes in the circuit and the voltage at this node is same as the v of s so similarly let's say the voltage at this first node is equal to vx so now by applying the kcl at these two nodes we can find the relation between the v out and the vi and eventually from that we can easily find the transfer function so first of all let us apply the kcl at this second node so applying the kcl we can write this v out divided by 1 divided by s that is this current plus v out divided by 1 ohm that is this current plus v out minus vx divided by s that is this current should be equal to zero that means the summation of all the outgoing current should be equal to zero so from this if we further simplify it then we can write it as this s times v out plus v out plus this v out divided by s that is equal to this vx divided by s or if we further simplify it then we can write it as this v out divided by s times this s square plus s plus 1 that is equal to this vx divided by s so here on both sides this s will get cancel out that means now we will have this vx is equal to this s square plus s plus 1 times v out so let's say this is the equation number 1 so similarly now let us apply the kcl at this second node so apply the kcl at this node we can write this vx divided by this 1 divided by s that is this current plus vx minus vi divided by 1 ohm that is this current plus vx minus v out divided by s that is this current should be equal to 0 that means the summation of all the outgoing current should be equal to 0 so if we further simplify it then we can write it as this s times vx plus vx minus vi plus vx divided by s minus v out divided by s that is equal to 0 so we can say that this vx times this s plus 1 plus 1 divided by s minus v out divided by s that is equal to vi or if we further simplify it then we can write it as this vx times this s square plus s plus 1 divided by s minus v out divided by s that is equal to vi and earlier we have seen that this vx is equal to this s square plus s plus 1 times v out so in this expression if we put these values then we can say that this v out divided by s times s square plus s plus 1 whole square minus v out divided by s 
that is equal to vi so further we can write it as this v out divided by s times this s square plus s plus 1 whole square minus 1 is equal to vi so now let us expand this term and let us try to simplify it so if we expand this term then we can write it as this s to the power 4 plus s square plus 1 plus 2 times s cube plus 2s plus 2 times s square and here we will also have this minus 1 that means overall this entire term times v out that is equal to s times v in so here this plus 1 and the minus 1 will get cancelled out that means now we will have this s to the power 4 plus 2s cube plus 3s square plus 2s times v out that is equal to s times v in so now if we bring this s in the denominator and further we can write it as this s cube plus 2s square plus 3s plus 2 times v out that is equal to v in or we can say that this v out divided by v in that is equal to 1 divided by this s cube plus 2s square plus 3s plus 2 that means this will be the transfer function for the given network so in this way we can easily find the transfer function for the any network so similarly let us take another example so in this question we have been given the transfer function of the given network and here we have been asked to find the value of this load resistance rl so that we can get this specific transfer function that means here this is the given network and this is the transfer function of the given network so first of all let us find the equivalent s domain representation for the given network so as you know for the resistors the equivalent s domain representation will remain as it is while for the capacitor the equivalent s domain representation is equal to 1 divided by cs that means overall if we see the equivalent s domain circuit then this is how it will look like so now this capacitor and the load resistor are connected in the parallel connection let's say that equivalent impedance is equal to z1s that means this z1s is the parallel combination of these two elements that is equal to this 1 divided by cs times rl divided by this 1 divided by cs plus rl so that is equal to rl divided by this 1 plus rl times cs and now using the voltage divider rule we can say that this v out is equal to this z1 of s divided by z1 of s plus r times this vi or we can say that this v out divided by vi is equal to z1 of s divided by z1 of s plus r so now in this expression let us put the value of this z1 of s that means now this v out divided by vi is equal to this rl divided by this 1 plus rl times cs divided by once again this rl divided by 1 plus rl times cs plus r or we can say that that is equal to this rl divided by this rl plus r times 1 plus rl times cs or further we can write it as this rl divided by this rl plus this r plus r times rl times cs so now let us divide both numerator and the denominator by the rl so if we do so then the rl in the numerator and the denominator will get cancel out and we will have this v out divided by vi that is equal to this 1 divided by 1 plus this r divided by rl plus r times cs so now if we compare this expression with given expression then we can say that over here this 1 plus r divided by rl should be equal to 2 and it can happen whenever this r is equal to rl so from this we can say that to get this transfer function the value of the load resistor should be same as the r and with this value we can get this specific transfer function so in this way we can find the transfer function of the given network 
or if we know the transfer function of the network then from that we can find the component values so i hope in this video you understood what is the driving point impedance and what is the transfer function of the electrical network and if you have been given an electrical network then how to find these parameters so if you have any question or suggestion then do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe the channel for more such videos